Welcome to Cheap Controls. On this YouTube channel, I make videos on things that I struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. I had somebody ask about the enable feature on the timers, how to turn it off and on, and I thought that I probably should have covered that in my last video, so I went ahead and made a part B. This is where I left off on tutorial number three, where I talked about the timers this timer down here and where we did the commands to increment the timer to have the dial go up, the progress bar go up, and um, display the number over here. Move and run it just to show you that it works. You can see that the counter goes up and the progress goes up and it works as it should. But if you wanted to start and stop it you could do that with a button. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink this I'm going to move this counter over here and add a button. I'm going to go ahead and change the text to enable just to make it clear. And if you notice on the timer, there's this enable down here. And it's a value that you can access. Just like when we were accessing the progress bar, this J0, we could set the value of it. You can set the value of the timer enable portion. So we'll click on this, and when we press the event, it's just EN instead of VAL. And if you set it to zero, it will stop. I'm going to compile. No errors and then do debug. Now if I hit the enable, it should stop. Now it doesn't start again because once I click it, it stops it and it never starts. So the next thing would be to make it start. So on the release event, we can just set it to start. And now whenever I hold it, it stops. When I let it up, it starts. Now what if you wanted it to stop? You press it once and it stops. You press it again it starts. If you want to do that, you could use a variable and do some manipulation on this button. Or we can add a radio button. I'm going to make it large. And if I go to this enable, and I copy it, paste it in there, and on release, paste it in there. What we're essentially doing is, is the same thing the enable button does. And I'm just going to go ahead and display that just to show you that that's how that works. So when I hold it, it stops. When I let it up, it goes. When I hold it, it stops. When I let it up, it goes. The problem is, is you probably want it to be running when you see it and not running when it's off. And that's not the way I have it working in this instance. If you look at the button and um, the properties or attributes of it over here, one of the attributes is val, the current value of the button. When you see the black in there, it's set to 1. If the black is gone, it's set to 0. And if you remember the enable the timer when it's set to 1, the timer goes, and when it's set to 0, it stops. So all we have to do is on this press event, is set it to the value of the button itself. So all we're going to do is set the enable to the value. And we want to remove this because if we were to release it, it would always go to 1 and we don't want that. Now we'll go ahead and run. So when it's that's 1, and now it stops. Now, if you remember when I set this, I did it on the touch event, not the release. So it changes when I click on it. And then when I release, it keeps running. So down here, when I press it, it changes the value of the button 
and then it executes the code. If it were to execute the code and then change the value of the button, I'd have to change it to the release event. So we're going to go con we're going to delete this. And we're going to paste it in the release. And what you'll see is it'll function exactly the same. stops and it starts. In some ways I wish that it would on press that it would run the code first and then make the changes. There are some cases where that might come in handy where I want it to do when I push this I want it to do something based upon what the value was before I pushed it. That, that's rare but it would be nice sometimes because you'd always have the release event. For this example it pretty much works the same no matter where you put that. The other thing you can use is a checkbox. I'm going to move this over. And if you look at the checkbox, it also has a value. So if we go to here and we copy this over to the checkbox, we'll do it on the press. What will happen is you'll see it'll ex it will operate the exact same as the radio button. In this case it didn't because what I did is I copied it directly so it's referencing the radio button which I'm not changing so what we need to do is change this to instead of R it needs to be C. Now let's go in and debug. There. But what's interesting is when I push this button which also turned it off even though these are both off it only does, it remembers the last thing that was pressed. So if I were to come up here, when we click off of it, it'll start running even though those checkboxes are off. It doesn't keep looking at these to determine where they are. It just knows to do whatever it was last told to do. There are ways that you could check through if-then statements. And we'll, we'll get into that in the future tutorials, but, but for right now I just wanted to show you that you are able to start and stop a timer. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.